IUPAC nomenclature of coordination compounds. Well, there are two common ways of writing coordination compounds. In this case, the coordination sphere is present at the left hand side and the counter ion is present at the right hand side. The left side is always considered to be the positive charge and the right side is always considered to be the negative charge. According to the rules, we firstly name the ligand part. Secondly, we name the central metal atom. Lastly, we name the counter ion. While in this case, the counter ion is present at the left hand side and the coordination sphere is present at the right hand side. As usual, the left hand side is always considered to be the positive charge and the right hand side is always considered to be the negative charge. According to the rules, we firstly name the counter ion and the coordination sphere we name the ligand. Lastly, we name the central metal atom. Thus, these are the two most common ways to write coordination compounds and we will follow these two patterns to name any coordination compound. Now we will learn naming ligands. Well, we know that there are three types of ligands. Neutral, anionic and cationic. In case of neutral ligands, remember the names of these common ligands like ammonia NH3, aqua H2O, carbonyl CO, nitrosyl NO, thiocarbonyl CS, etc. In case of anionic ligands, the Ig is replaced by O. Like chloride is written as chloro, bromo Br, hydro sulfito SO, amido NH2, amido NH, isido N, and oxo O, etc. In case of cationic ligands, we usually add IUM at the end. Like nitrosonium, NO, nitronium, NO2, hydrazinium, etc. Remember that ammonium ion NH4 is not a ligand because it has no lone pair. Thus remember these names of the ligands. Now we will learn IUPAC nomenclature of ligands. We will only learn naming ligands because it will make things super easy. For example, consider these coordination compounds. We know that this is the coordination sphere. This is the ligand cyanide. And this 6 means 6 cyanide ions. Now for this 6, I write hexa. This is cyanide ligand. We know that for negative ligand, we remove the IDE and we replace it by O. Thus I get hexacyano. Secondly, in case of this coordination compound, the ligand is ammonia NH3. For this two, I write di. And for this ammonia, I write amine. Thus I get diamine. Thirdly, in case of this coordination compound, the ligand is chlorine. And there are four ions of chlorine. I write tetra. For chlorine ion, I write chloro. Thus I get tetrachloro. Fourthly, in case of this coordination compound, the ligand is fluorine and there are six fluorine ions. For this six, I write hexa. For the fluorine ion, I write fluoro. Thus I get hexafluoro. Hence note it down these four examples. Now consider these coordination compounds. In case of this coordination compound, there are two ligands. One is chlorine and the another is water H2O. We know that water is a neutral ligand and its name is aqua. While chlorine is an ionic ligand, we write chloro for it. Now listen carefully. If there are two or more ligands, we write them in alphabetic order. Let me repeat it. If there are two or more ligands, 
we write them in alphabetic order. We know that A comes first, then C. So I write aqua and then chloro. We know that there are four molecules of water. I write tetra aqua. Well, there are two ions of chlorine. I write dichloro. Remember that there is no space while writing names of ligands. Thus, I get tetra aqua dichloro. Secondly, in case of this coordination compound, there are two ligands. One is En and the other is chlorine ion. This En stands for ethane 1 to diamine. Remember that if there are two En molecules, we write base. We cannot write di because di is already there and diamine. If there are three En molecules, we write trace. If there are four En molecules, we write tetra case and so on. According to the rule, CN chloro comes first, then EN ethane 1 to diamine. So I write chloro and then I write ethane 1 to diamine. There are two chlorine ions. I write dichloro. There are two En molecules. I write this ethane 1 to diamine. Remember that there is no space between the words. Thus I get dichloro bis ethane 1 to diamine. Now consider these coordination compounds. In this case, there are two ligands, NH3 and NO2. Remember that this NO2 is known as nitrate 2N. According to alphabetic order, ammonia is written first, then nitrate 2N. There are five molecules of ammonia. I write pentaamine. For the NO2, I write nitrate 2N. Thus, I get pentaamine nitrate 2N. Secondly, in this coordination compound, there are also two ligands, NH3 and NO. Remember that this NO is known as nitrate 2O. According to the alphabetic order, there are five molecules of NH3. I write pentaamine. For this NO, I write nitrate 2O. Thus, I get pentaamine nitrate 2O. Therefore, using this simple method, we can easily name ligands of coordination compounds. Hence, note it down. Now we will learn IUPAC nomenclature of coordination compounds. Well, I will follow these steps. We will name coordination compounds from left to the right. Secondly, if the coordination sphere is negative, we will add ATE to the central metal atom. Now consider these coordination compounds. We know that the left side of the coordination compound is always positive and the right side of the coordination compound is always negative. Firstly, I will find the oxidation state of central metal atom. I write 4 potassium plus iron plus 6 ionide ions is equal to 0 because the overall charge on this coordination compound is 0. We know that the oxidation state of potassium is positive 1 and that of cyanide ion is negative 1. I write 4 into 1 plus iron plus 6 into negative 1 equals to 0. After calculation, I get iron is equal to positive 2. Hence, the oxidation state of iron is positive 2. Remember that if you do not know calculating oxidation state, then watch our lecture and its link is given in the description. Now, I write potassium. Remember that in case of counter ion, we do not consider the numbers. I mean, we do not try it, die, try, etc. Secondly, in the coordination sphere, I name the ligand. And there are six ions of cyanide. I write hexacyano. Lastly, the central metal atom is iron. 
we know that if the coordination sphere has negative charge, we put ATE with the central metal atom. Let me repeat it. If the coordination sphere has negative charge, we put ATE with the central metal atom. So for this iron, I write ferrite. The oxidation number of iron is 2. I write here 2. Thus I get potassium hexacyanoferrate 2. So this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. Now in this case, as usual, I write here positive charge and I write here negative charge. Here I will find the oxidation number of central metal atom which is silver. I write silver plus 2 ammonia plus chlorine ion equals to 0. We know that the oxidation state of ammonia being a neutral molecule is 0 and that of chlorine ion is negative 1. I write silver plus 2 into 0 plus negative 1 is equal to 0. After calculation, I get silver is equal to 1. Hence, the oxidation state of central metal atom, silver is 1. According to the rule, I firstly name the ligand. In the coordination sphere, the ligand is ammonia and there are two molecules of ammonia. I write diamine. For this silver, I write silver. Remember that the coordination sphere has positive charge. So I do not put ATE with the central metal atom. We know that the oxidation state of silver is 1. I write here 1. For this chlorine, I just write chloride. Thus I get diamine silver 1 chloride. Hence this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. Now consider these coordination compounds. As usual, I write here positive charge and I write here negative charge. Secondly, I calculate the oxidation state of central metal atom which is nickel. After calculation, I get the oxidation state of nickel is positive 2. According to the rule, I write potassium and the coordination sphere there are four ions of chlorine. I write tetrachloro. The central metal atom is nickel and the charge on coordination sphere is negative. Hence, I write nickelate. The oxidation state of nickel is 2. Thus, I get potassium tetrachloro nickelate 2. Hence, this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. In case of this coordination compound, there is already negative charge, so I do not put any charge on it. What about the oxidation state? Well, after calculation, I get the oxidation state of iron is positive 2. Hence, the oxidation state of iron is positive 2. Now, in the coordination sphere, there are 6 fluorine ions. I write here hexa. And we know that the ligand is fluorine. I write fluoro. The central metal atom is iron. We can see that the charge on coordination sphere is negative. I write ferrite. The oxidation state of iron is positive 2. I write here 2. Thus I get hexafluoroferrite 2 ion. Hence this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. Now consider these coordination compounds. As usual, I write positive charge and negative charge. After calculation, the oxidation state of chromium is 3. In the coordination sphere, there are two ligands, water and chlorine ion. According to the alphabetic order, I write firstly aqua and then chloro. There are four molecules of water, I write tetraaqua. There are two molecules of chlorine. I write dichloro. The central metal atom is chromium. The charge on coordination sphere is positive. Hence, I only write chromium. The oxidation state of chromium is 3. For this NO3, I write nitrate. Thus, I get tetraaqua dichloro chromium 3 nitrate. 
Hence, this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. Now, in case of this coordination compound, I write positive charge and negative charge. The oxidation state of cobalt is 3. Here, in the coordination sphere, there are two ligands, En and chlorine. According to the rule, for these two chlorine ions, I write dichloro. For these two En molecule, I write bisethane 1 to diamine. For the central metal atom, I write only cobalt. The oxidation state of cobalt is 3. For this chlorine, I just write chloride. Thus, I get dichloro bisethane 1 to diamine cobalt 3 chloride. Hence, this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. Now consider this coordination compound. I write positive charge and negative charge. The oxidation state of chromium is 3. I write pentaamine. For this NO2, I write nitrate 2N. For this chromium, I write chromium. And the oxidation state of chromium is 3. For this chlorine, I just write chloride. Thus I get pentaamine nitrate 2N chromium 3 chloride. Hence, this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. Now consider this coordination compound. I write positive and negative charge. The oxidation state of platinum in this coordination sphere is 2. While the oxidation state of platinum in this coordination sphere is also 2. Now for these 4 molecules of NH3, I write tetraamine. For platinum, I write platinum. The oxidation state of platinum is 2. Secondly, for these 4 ions of chlorine, I write tetrachloro. The charge on coordination sphere is negative. For this platinum, I write platinate. The oxidation state of platinum is 2. Thus, I get tetraamine platinum 2 tetrachloro platinate 2. Hence, this is the IUPAC name of this coordination compound. Finally, consider this coordination compound. Pause the video and try to write its IUPAC name. Well, there is already negative charge present on it. The oxidation state of chromium is 3. Remember that C2O4 is a ligand which is known as oxalato. We can see that there are three oxalates. I write trioxalato. The central metal atom is chromium. And the charge on coordination sphere is negative. I write chromate. The oxidation state of chromium is 3. Thus I get trioxalato chromate 3 ion. Therefore, using this method, we can easily name any coordination compound. I hope that you have learned all about IUPAC nomenclature of coordination compounds.